hello nice to meet you all again in the next uh, video so today we will see uh, a short lecture on uh, actuators so previously we have seen one video on actuators and today we will see another part of uh, actuators which is the power element okay so pneumatic actuators so what is, what is pneumatic actuator so pneumatic actuator are the devices used for converting pressure energy of compressed air into mechanical energy to perform useful work so this will be the last part of the pneumatic system where it will help you to do any work so how pneumat pneumatic actuators are actually doing work they are converting pressure energy from your compressed air into a mechanical energy so when there is mechanical energy involved there will be movement so when the work is done so it will help you to do uh, whatever work that you want request it to do okay so in other words the actuators are used to perform the task of exerting the required force at the end of the stroke or used to create displacement so as i said uh, mechanical energy is involving a movement so when the movement is involved it creates a displacement okay there's types of uh, pneumatic actuators so, uh, pneumatic actuators are divided into two one is the li linear actuators so it only have a translational move front and back and you have another types of uh, actuators we call it as a rotary actuators the so, rotary actuators uh, it will cause the actuators to turn to do the work okay so we will see linear actuators first so linear uh, pneumatic cylinders are devices for converting the air pressure into linear mechanical force and motion cylinder okay so you can see here uh, so pneumatic cylinders are basically used for single purpose application uh, such as uh, clamping stamping transferring branching allocating ejecting metering tilting bending turning and many other application so in the industry we can see that there are a lot of application involved and we will use linear actuators to help us to do the particular work okay so we see the second point type of linear actuator based action so we have a single acting cylinder and we have a double acting cylinder so what are those so we will see in the uh, next slides and we have uh, some special linear actuators so for special application you can customize your actuator and we have a telescopic cylinder we have tandem cylinder and also rotless cylinder okay so we will start with a single acting cylinder so what is single acting cylinder single acting cylinder has one working port so meaning compressed air only entering at one particular port and the return motion is controlled by the spring okay so uh, as i mentioned here forward motion of the piston is obtained by supplying compressed air so when you supply more compressed air your cylinder will extend okay now once you remove the sub, uh, compressed air so it will back to the original position because of the spring attached to the uh, rod of the cylinder okay so single acting cylinder i use where force is required to exert only in one direction so meaning you only want to supply compressor in one particular pot so you can consider using a single acting cylinder so uh, some of the application that involve single acting cylinder clamping uh, feeding sorting locking ejecting breaking and all the other types of application okay so single acting cylinder are usually av available for short stroke length so you can extend up to maximum 80 millimeter now uh, because this is set by the natural length of the spring okay so springs are naturally available at 80 millimeter so that's the standard uh, dimension length so uh, this follows the maximum length of the spring so single acting cylinder exert force only in one direction okay single acting cylinders require only about half of the air volume consumed by the double acting cylinders 
for one operating sector so we will see later about double acting cylinder so unlike single acting cylinder single acting cylinder only have one input port uh, so it only requires half of the air volume compressed air volume required by double acting cylinder because double acting cylinder has two port uh, one port is to extend the cylinder one more port to retract the cylinder uh, so it, uh, by mathematically it only requires half of the air volume okay, here you can see the construction of the single acting cylinder so we have you see uh, you have a piston and also you have a rod so you have the body and you have one pressure port so pressure is entering here so entering here then when it enters so it will create a force your piston will start to move in front and your rod will start to extend okay so once you don't supply any more pressure or you remove the pressure uh, the force will not be enough to hold the piston so the piston will start to move backward to the original position because of the spring uh, because spring is a mechanical uh, device okay so it will have the tendency to go back to the original place so that is how a single acting cylinder operates okay there are varying design of a single acting cylinder so you have a diaphragm cylinder you have a rolling diaphragm cylinder you have a spring return single acting cylinder so these are some of the design involving a single acting cylinder Okay, so we will see the first type diaphragm cylinder so this is the diaphragm cylinder so similar here we have a stem we have a cylinder this is considered rod and your piston is attached to a diaphragm and you have a air input air inlet okay pressure is entering here and you have a diaphragm okay, diaphragm is some sort like your body diaphragm uh, so it will expand and also and it will contract okay so in diaphragm cylinder piston is placed by a diaphragm so diaphragm is basically a hard rubber or plastic or metal which is elastic okay and uh, is average duty okay so the operating stem which take place of the, in the diaphragm cylinder so you can see uh, so this is uh, not called a rod in diaphragm cylinder this is called as a stem and it uh, has a higher force but it has a short operating stroke up to maximum 60 millimeter okay so if your application requires a short stroke and higher force because why it's higher force because it has a, a bigger place to keep the uh, compressor so uh, the force will be more so because your compressor air can enter a lot okay so it, but it only has a 60 millimeter so initially we saw a typical center acting cylinder as 80 millimeters of uh, stroke stroke length okay. so then we have another type so this is a modified version of uh, diaphragm cylinder we call it as a rolling diaphragm cylinder it has a, cap a capability to extend over until uh, 800 millimeter so almost like uh, more than 10 times okay more than 10 times of the normal stroke why this can extend so it still has the uh, springs and it still has the stem but it has a flexible diaphragm compared to the previous one it has a flexible diaphragm and it can really elastic uh, it can really expand follow the body of the uh, rolling diaphragm cylinder so when the pressure air is entering it can keep enter until it occupies a larger space compared to the diaphragm so that's why it can extend up to 800 millimeter uh, so the material used for the rolling diaphragm uh, is uh, must must be of a good durability durability meaning it can last long so under normal operating condition meaning it's not under extreme 
uh, under extreme heat or extreme cool. It's a normal operating condition like our normal ambient air. Okay. So uh, we can see a spring return cylinder. Okay, this is a, a typical uh, single acting cylinder. So you have two types. One is push type. Push type meaning you enter a pressure and it will ex extend out. So it will push out. Okay, your rod will be pushed out of the cylinder. So that is what we call as push type. So we have another type. We call it as a pull type. Pull type meaning you supply uh, compressor. You just switch the uh, operating port. Okay, so this is actually the same as this, but the ports are switched. Uh, so this is uh, something that we call as a pull type single acting single acting cylinder, uh, because when the pressure is ent entering, it your cylinder will start to retract. Uh, so it, this is opposite of uh, the push type. Okay, so. We, we have seen about single acting cylinder now we see about double acting cylinder so double acting cylinder or we call it as a DAC single acting cylinder we call it as a SAC okay so a DAC so it uh, compared to the single acting cylinder uh, in a double acting cylinder you have two working port instead of one so initially in the single acting cylinder you have one working port and the return is controlled by the spring but in double acting cylinder, no spring, you need to uh, have uh, two working port. Meaning to extend, you supply in one working port and your cylinder will extend. And if you want the cylinder to retract, you need to supply in the opposite direction for it to retract. So you have two working port. Okay, so forward motion of the cylinder compressor is admitted to the piston side and the road side is connected to exhaust. Uh, okay, so you have a compressed air admitted, admi admitted meaning entering the piston. Okay, so you have two sides. You have two sides. This is piston side. This is rod side. So when the compressor enters here into the piston side, the remaining air in your rod side will force to go up. So, so that is what it, it is saying. Okay, so there is no spring return. Okay, the construction of double acting cylinder, no spring. So initially in single acting cylinder, in this compartment, you have spring. In double acting cylinder, no spring. So many uh, when you are drawing in your circuit design, make sure double acting cylinder, you don't draw the spring. Okay, so air pressure can be applied in either side. So you can have a two side. So depends on which operation you want to do so you can supply uh, the air pressure okay so so the flexibility of double active cylinder because uh, initially single active cylinder was controlled by the spring length uh, in double active cylinder you don't have spring so it can be used in an application where longer stroke length is required so it can be very long and uh, as long you your head tank compressor tank or the your compressor can supply the compressor so it can extend as long you can create the push here okay the types of uh, double acting cylinder you have a piston rod on one side okay so this is what we call as a piston rod in one side so meaning another uh, side is uh, fully closed you only have a piston rod coming out from one side so this uh, we call as a piston rod on one side so we have another type we call it as a piston rod on both side something similar like this so you have both side so meaning if you supply air uh, depends on the supply port it will extend either this side or this side so you have a rod in two sides so uh, uh, if you see the cross section area so you have one piston and you have two rod so left hand side and also uh, right hand side and also left hand side okay 
So use in application where ca work can be done in both ends of the cylinder and maximum length is required. Okay, so you can uh, modify this and to fit in your system where uh, you, you want the work to be done in both sides and you have a maximum length uh, required. It can have a maximum length because it has a length of uh, two rods. Okay. So can you withstand higher side load because they have an extra bearing uh, one, uh, one in each rod to withstand the loading. Okay, so you have you can add more loads. Okay, because you can uh, you can hold more power. Okay, so then we have uh, some uh, special design industrial pistons we call as a uh, specially designed or custom made custom made pistons or cylinders okay so we have a telescopic cylinder we have a tandem cylinder and we have a rodless cylinder so we'll see you sh shortly uh, what is uh, this telescopic cylinder so telescopic cylinder is uh, some uh, the design will be like a telescope so uh, the one that you use for your astronomy studies so you want to see the stars or moon so you have a telescope uh, so telescopic cylinder uh, it with a stage cylinder okay, it has a few stages okay so you have a pressure port this is your exhaust port uh, so when you supply your pressure it will start to extend okay so uh, so this is the cross section area so you can see you, you have a three uh, pistons you have one year and you have uh, you have a uh, three compartments the so first compartment is uh, connected to here then uh, you have a second compartment uh, is controlled by this and third one is inside okay so you have uh, three bodies okay so uh, what is extra about this uh, telescopic cylinder is used when long stroke length and short retractor length are required. So uh, you can have a very long stroke when it is fully extended and when it is a retractor you only have need a smaller speed to keep it. So if your application requires like this so you can use consider using this telescopic cylinder. Okay so but since this is a custom made it won't be cheap so whatever is custom made in industry so it will be very expensive okay so the extend in stages each stage consists of a sleeve that fits inside the previous stage so meaning uh, when you have some kind like a lock so that the piston won't go up so you have a lock here okay so you have a lock here uh, so when it extends, it won't go uh, beyond this. So this piston will not go out of the body. Okay. So what? How this thing is uh, functioning? So the air is entering here. So it will enter and it will fill this place first. So it will once it it fill this place, uh, it will start to push this so your this piston will move out so once it move out uh, the compressor is all fully fill this place uh, then it will start to push this it will start to push this and it will start to extend okay so it's a base basic basically is a based on um, mechanical way of pushing the cylinders out okay so which stage will go out first okay based on the explanation i gave you earlier so once the pressure is entering stage 3 will go out first once it fully extended then it will pull stage 2 and once the stage 2 is fully extended it will pull stage 1 uh, so then it will be fully extended okay once you remove what will happen stage 3 will uh, retract first 
then it will pull stage 2 then stage 1 until it become a retractor position telescopic cylinder so I think uh, this part I already exp uh, explained so how it works the extension stroke and also retraction stroke so you can read the explanation okay then we move to the second type of special double acting cylinder we call it as a tandem cylinder so tandem cylinder is uh, some sort similar like a normal double acting cylinder but you have a wall here in between so when you have a wall here and you have uh, additional pots so you can see here you have one pot is entering and one pot is uh, coming out and another in the another room so you have two rooms room one and room two uh, room one and room two happens because you have a wall in between and you have uh, two ports one to enter one, one more to exit one to enter and one more to exit and you have uh, two instead of one piston you have two piston here one and two and these rods are connected okay so what is what's the function of tandem cylinder okay it's used where large output force is required with applicable saving a bulk and weight so meaning it will be a normal double acting cylinder size but because of this so you you can supply more compressor when in pneumatic you need to understand when you supply more compressed air uh, meaning uh, you will have more force so uh, output of this it has a, has a uh, larger output force okay so if let's say your normal double acting cylinder pro provide 100 newton of force uh, tandem cylinder will produce 200 uh, 200 uh, newton of force because you have more compressor pushing and producing the force okay so the advantage it produce large force and it maintain the same dimension of the cylinder same size okay small diameter of the assembly is required okay so this are all the same okay so it is uh, okay i already explained this so separate double acting cylinder arrange in in one cylinder body okay so is the doubling the piston output okay pressure is applied on both piston resulting in increased force because of the larger area so meaning it, larger area is exposed for compressed air force so it will produce more force okay so it has one drawback okay so we have a drawback here what is the drawback uh, is that this cylinder must uh, must be longer than a standard cylinder of the larger flow rate than a standard cylinder to achieve uh, equal speed because flow must go in both system okay so when you produce a compressed air uh, in two different place so your speed can be reduced okay so when you want to have an equal speed you need to double up the size Okay, double up the size okay so cylinders must be longer okay so uh, that, that's one uh, drawback but uh, even though it can produce a larger force but the speed will be reduced because your compressor is uh, is uh, some sort like uh, divided okay so if you want to uh, you want it to produce larger force and uh, with a normal or equal speed like a normal double acting cylinder so you need to uh, increase the cylinder length okay so that is on the tandem cylinder okay so the final one is the rodless uh, cylinder so rodless cylinder meaning you don't have uh, any rod coming up from the cylinder Okay, a rodless air cylinder differs from a basic air cylinder in that no piston rod extends outside the cylinder body. Okay, so instead the internal piston is connected to an external carriage by means of a ma magnetic or mechanical coupling system. Okay, so you have uh, two types of uh, rodless cylinder. So in rodless cylinder, you don't have any piston rod. 
like how you saw earlier so cylinder will extend or retract so you won't have that kind of setup in your rodless cylinder so it's a pistonless or rodless uh, cylinder okay so uh, is how it operates it connected to a magnetic or mechanical coupling system so you have two types one is the cable cylinder cable cylinder is a uh, fully mechanical and you have a cylinder with mechanic magnetically coupled slide okay so you can see the cylinder type so this is the construction okay so you have a piston here uh, so it's all fully sealed and this is uh, connected to a pulley okay some sort like this and you have a yoke here and you place a load it's a more like a conveyor system okay conveyor in the industry is using uh, electric but this is um like a mechanical or pneumatical co conveyor okay so it can have a very long stroke up to 2000 uh, millimeters okay so it has a nylon jack cable so this cable is a nylon jack cable okay enters the cylinder barrel so this is your cylinder barrel so you have your cylinder here okay and it's a fully sealed okay when compressed air so compressed air can enter here or this side because this is the double acting cylinder no spring so meaning you can switch so if you and if the compressor enters here so it will push this piston this side okay so, uh, so this will be the exhaust uh, this will be the entrance so when, once this thing is moving to the right hand side so it will your pulley will start to rotate in clockwise so counterclockwise sorry counterclockwise and this cable will push this load to left hand side because I follow the cable movement okay so if the compressor enters on the right hand side and going out from the left hand side so your piston will start to move to left okay when it move to left so your pulley will start to have a clockwise movement and your load will move to right hand side okay so the load movement is opposite of piston movement uh, and uh, that that was on the cable cable or mechanical uh, operated uh, rodless cylinder so this is another types of uh, rodless cylinder we call it as a mechanic magnetically coupled slide okay so you have a magnetical coupled slide so meaning you don't have any cables attached it is fully on the magnetic force you know how magnetic force works okay so you have a po powerful magnet so the blue color here are the magnets so inside the piston you have magnet so both ends outside you have magnet and you have a load you have a carriage okay so when this powerful magnet move to right or left your carriage will start to follow because of the magnetic force okay uh, and this can extend up to double of the previous rotless cylinder it can go up to 4000 millimeters of uh, length stroke length okay so the, uh, yeah, this is possible because it's using a powerful magnet okay major advantage of this so you have no leakage no leakage because no oil or, or no fluid uh, involved okay it's only fully based on compressed air so there is no direct contact of moving elements therefore no where where or there okay so no direct so it's all fully uh, based on contactless contactless movement and orientation of the carriage can be changed easily meaning uh, you can just take it out and you can uh, twist and uh, you put it in out another direction as long as the, the magnets are connected okay so that's uh, some of the ad major advantage of this type of rotless cylinder okay so uh, when the uh, it has uh, two ports because it's double acting cylinder so if the compressor enters here 
it will push the magnet to the right hand side so your carriage will move, move to right hand side so if the pot uh, the compressor enters through this pot at the right so your, uh, your the pot, the force will push this piston to left hand side so your carriage will move to left hand side so that is how basically these pistons are working so i think with that uh, i conclude so I hope uh, you can understand how this uh, piston works. So if you have more questions, you can ask during the discussion time. So I think, uh, thank you. Okay, have a nice day.